Well, welcome to my office and on this Monday in Holy Week, I thought I would come in here each day and, and put something up. Um, uh, not a full liturgy, it might be a brief reflection, it might be something that uh, from the, the booklet that I linked in the Palm Sunday uh, service yesterday. Uh, it, it could be anything. Um, I could do morning prayer or evening prayer, who knows, but I'll try and get on here um, each day this week. Uh, before the Friday, good, uh, before the Good Friday service on Friday from the Sun, Sun line at Switch. I'm not doing on Friday, I'm going to have to do beforehand uh, to be able to edit and, and upload. But anyway, Monday in Holy Week. The glad hosannas are no longer heard. The shouting is over. The palms are gathered. The shadows lengthen. The plotting begins in earnest. Knowing the outcome, what we come with heavy hearts. So what do we hear? I think an unchanged and unchanging message of God's love. Today, God's love is through um, the prophet and it's also obvious through a woman's love in the gospel that I will read. So let me begin with uh, the collect for this week. Um, so let me pray. God of all, you gave your only begotten son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. So here is God's love foretold by Isaiah in the shape of a servant. And the reading comes from Isaiah 42, uh, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. But he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the next reading I want to, to share with you is the, the Gospel for today, if we had it in the Eucharist. Um, and it's one of my favourite readings, so I had to have it. Um, so it's from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. 
he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I think today we're reminded how Mary demonstrates through her extravagant love what it means to love without heeding the cost. I, I've done this um, before. Um, it's, it's, it, it's a reflection called It Was On A Monday. And um, I thought I'd share it again today. I can't actually remember where it comes from. It is on a book that is in my very, very messy office, but I never have time to sort them, and so I'm always searching for them. I did do a bit of a search, a quick search, but um, I gave up. So it was on the Monday. It was on the Monday that they called him a waster. The place smelt like the perfume department of a big store. It was as if somebody had bumped their elbow against a bottle and sent it crashing to the floor, setting off the most expensive stink bomb on earth. But it happened in a house, not a shop. And the woman who broke the bottle was no casual shopper. She was the penniless, poorest of the poor, giving away the only precious thing she had. And he sat still, while she poured the liquid all over his head, as unnecessary as aftershave, on a full crop of hair and a bearded chin. And those who smelt it, and those who saw it, and those who remembered that he was against extravagance, called him a waster. They forgot that he was also the poorest of the poor. And they who had much, and who had given him nothing, objected to a pauper giving him everything. Jealousy was in the air when a poor woman's generosity became an embarrassment to their tight-fistedness. That was on the Monday when they called him a waster. I now just want to end with some prayers and um, we'll, if you want to join with me at the end with the Lord's Prayer. So let me pray. God of truth, we pray for all people who, like Mary, reflect the humility and servanthood of Jesus Christ, that they may be strengthened to continue this way of life. We pray for all whose lives are without gentleness and kindness, those who are judged unfairly for their actions or their looks and those who find themselves without family or friends for support during this unprecedented time of distancing around the world. We pray for all peacemakers, giving thanks for those whose lives have been dedicated to make this world a better place. Today we pray for those with influence in our world during the novel coronavirus pandemic that all efforts will indeed flatten the curve to enable people and societies to soon function once again. We pray for our church here and across the world as we learn to come together in different ways. Help us to look to Jesus as this week we journey with him to the cross and celebrate the resurrection at Easter with joy in our hearts. 
And finally, we pray for all who have died, believing in you, and through their lives walked this week with you. We especially remember Sue, who we will farewell this week. May she, <clears throat> may she and all who have died know the comfort and peace of the one who gave them life that they would live. And in the words that Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, bless you all and um, I will see you again tomorrow.